Hello, uh, this is Graham Morrison from Linux Voice. Um, I'm going to use this video to talk briefly about both Bitwig Studio version 1, uh, which is here, um, a significant milestone in audio applications on Linux, um, but also a little bit about the Jack audio subsystem, which is what ties the audio in software like uh, Bitwig Studio and Arda to your audio hardware in the most flexible way. Um, this is important. I mean, I'm always going on about how complex Linux audio is in a bad way for ordinary users. Um, but Jack itself is a great reason for audio producers, for music people um, to actually use Linux. It's a, it's a great way to configure your audio, audio system in, in any way that you like. Um, and the way to start with Jack is to stop all J ulcer connections. Ulcer is the, it's, it's become basically the driver for your audio hardware. Um, install the QJack CTL control panel. This is a, this is it running on the uh, QT API. Open up the setup window. Um, most default settings will work, or you could use um, an audio distribution or a multimedia distribution that comes with Jack pre-configured pre for most hardware. I'm using um, a semi-pro audio interface um, made by Focusrite. It's called a Sapphire Pro 40. It has 40 inputs and outputs, 20 inputs, 20 outputs, um, which makes Jack and uh, Bitwig Studio look slightly more complicated than it would do on the average system. Um, if I actually show you, you can see the great thing about Jack is that all connections can be made in real time. <laughs> so um, as an application launches, it can be chained into the audio stream. It can disconnect from the audio stream. It can take inputs and outputs from any of the inputs and outputs of the other Jack compatible hardware. And that is exactly what's happening here, even though it looks like it's such a mess. Basically, we have my audio hardware, which is running Firewire drivers um, from the FFADO project. A wonderful project. They've done in an incredible job getting things like the Sapphire Pro 40 working without any um, official support from Focusrite. Although I know Focusrite had sent some of the developers some hardware to at least be able to test it on. Fado drivers on Linux run really, really well. Low latency, many inputs, many outputs. Um, this comes up in Jack as system, pretty unimaginative. Um, you can see that there are 20 inputs on my audio interface, and they are all actually rewired to 20 inputs on Bitwig Studio. That's all that's actually showing. And as a great illustration of how powerful Jack is, um, I'm taking two outputs from Bitwig Studio, and I'm using them in the screen recorder software that I'm using um, to record this whole video. So it's just taking the outputs 20 and 21, which happen to be the main outputs in the software running in the background here, um, coming out of the S software into the simple screen recorder, which is capturing this part of the screen along with the audio from Jack. Um, I don't know of another way of being able to do something like that in a different operating system. This is all happening live through Bitwig Studio. Um, and that's because it's using Jack and Jack running on Linux. This is Bitwig Studio. Um, when it's sitting on top of Jack, it's incredibly configurable. Um, if I go into the audio inputs here, you see it's taking the Jack audio connection kit as the audio system that it's using. It's got the same system device that I just showed you. And then you're, you could create audio inputs and audio outputs for the application yourself. So I happen to have a Voyager plugged in to inputs five and six on my audio interface. And I can create a stereo input for that channel, which is what I did, and then told it that it's plugged into these. I've also got another synth on one. I've got another one on two. I've got an effects unit returning effects on these two. Um, this microphone is plugged into a Mackie mixer, which is going on to input uh, 15. Similarly, stereo output, that's the output that the simple screen recorder is grabbing. Um, I've got it set to go into speakers, but there's also an effects. That's an output going to the effects bus, goes out to three and four, comes in on 13 and 14. So 
Bitwig Studio is able to um, integrate external equi equipment extremely effectively. Um, and when you're using Jack at a low latency, like I am, um, if I just open up the setup here, you can see that I'm, I've got a latency of about 5.8 milliseconds. And that's the delay between me speaking into this microphone and me hearing it in my headphones. And for most people, that's an imperceptible delay that allows you to do um, tracking with live performers through this system without having to worry and, and also processing the effects at the same time without having to worry about giving them another kind of audio feed so that they don't get put off by any delay they may hear. Um, it's kind of the, the holy grail of audio production. Um, the lower the latency, the, the more polling is done and the, the higher the CPU use. Um, and, and Linux does really well running through Jack, running through Bitwig Studio. Um, in fact, all of this is recorded live. Um, these are tracks in an arrangement view. I've created these myself. Um, this last track here is the mic input. And here on the left, you can see the channel details and this Mackie left bit here. These are from the inputs that I created. You can see Mackie left. Um, that's the microphone plugged into the mixer going into my audio interface. It's going out to the master bus, which is the main audio output, which is going into the screen recorder. Um, I've got it monitoring, which is why you can hear me. Um, this is the volume control. Um, and I've also got it going into two effects. The great thing about Bitwig Studio is that you can do all of this messing around with the configuration, even all of this in while the audio is still running. That partly makes it great for live performance. It means you can change systems, you can create and construct in real time as you're performing. Um, but it's also very, very creative as you're working with audio because you don't have to worry about starting and stopping sub subsystems or restarting the application or even the, how the audio layer is in the background. Um, and I'm, that happens whether you're adding effects or sounds or whatever you happen to, do, happen to be doing. So I'm, I'm running a gate here. This is an audio effects that uh, turns off the input if um, the volume falls beneath a certain threshold, which is set here. If I turn it off, You'll hear that there's an awful lot of background noise um, from my fans and from uh, interference on the cables. Um, with it turned on, it goes silent when I stop talking. Um, a compressor, uh, what that does is um, it makes the there's less dynamic uh, in the volume of what I'm producing on, as an audio input actually makes things like words much more legible. It means that there's less difference if I move away from the microphone or I talk close, which is a much more natural way of um, dealing with spoken word and, and main vocals. Both of these are effects that come with Bitbig Studio. Um, you can see here, um, in fact, this is the uh, device and presets browser. It's also a browser for samples and loops. Um, all of this stuff comes with Bitwig um, audio effects. The um, the compressor, the gate, are both here. Um, you can there are lots of effects that come with it. We can, I haven't tried this, but let's try dropping try delay, dropping, on, delay, on, delay, on, delay on. You can see that it's added to delay to my voice in real time, in real time as it's processing the audio, as it's going to be recorded back into the simple screen recorder, um, and it's a great way of playing with audio. <laughs> Um, this holds true for everything. Um, there are not just audio effects, there are audio generators. And that's a good way of starting with this track that I've just been playing with for this purpose of the review. So there's a review of Bitwig Studio in issue three of Linux Voice. But unless you've come across this kind of software before, um, it can seem pretty arcane. Um, this is an arrangement view that you might be used to from software like Arda. So, each track here, this this is synth. The audio data gets recorded onto these tracks. If you imagine them as simple tracks on a on a piece of tape, and this arrangement laid out horizontally becomes the production, it becomes something that you turn a, a, into an MP3 or a WAV file. Um, each track can have its own series of effects. Um, this polysynth is in fact a, a MIDI uh, track. Um, but a MIDI track where the MIDI data is going to go to one of the instruments that come with Bitwig, which is a polysynth. A polysynth is just a, a synth synthesizer that uh, 
it, it plays more than one note at once. Um, as you can see, there's no audio data here. But what makes different, um, what makes Bitwig different from the likes of Arda is that you mainly construct music using clips. And for that, we go to the mix view. This is this may look familiar if you've used something like Ableton Live, um, which was a, a kind of a genre-defining application for OS X and Windows, um, where music is constructed and deconstructed and deconstructed and DJ'd. In fact, Giorgio Moroder's made a bit of a living out of reconstructing his music using Ableton Live, because you can break down music into their constituent parts and create clips out of those constituent parts. But also you can build music from constituent clips that you create. Um, clips can be audio data, they can be MIDI data, they can be MIDI data going to external synths or to internal synths, and they can be a hybrid of both of them. Um, so here we have the same tracks that we had before, only laid out in this vertical view. And this grid here, if we, here's the polysynth, each one of these blocks holds a different clip, holds a different set of notes if it's a MIDI clip, or a different set of audio data if it's an audio clip. Um, the idea being that you can arrange them in such a way that you can either perform live and know where to find clips to build up the track, or that you can go from one scene to the next scene to the next scene and build up the complexity of the track and, and also the dynamic range of a track over time. Um, so, for example, the polysynth, we have some MIDI data here. Um, where is it? You can see, you can see, it. there it is. So these are just some notes that I played in from a MIDI keyboard and created a loop, which in turn has become a clip. I'll cl click play. Now, can you hear that? If I actually uh, go back to the device in real time, you can change the synth settings. So this is the clip that I'm playing. You can see that this line is going through to indicate the time, the duration of it. And these notes can be input and changed in real time. You can also automate changes on these notes for, for each note if you want to, but also for each clip, which is a great way of creating new clips. You could copy that clip down to another one and modify it yourself if you want to do. Also, it bounced to audio there. So this, this now is a hybrid track, which is a mixture between MIDI data and audio data, and I could process the audio in, in different ways than I could to the MIDI data. Um, going back to the um, changing the settings, you can also draw lines for the automation. Um, but most importantly, it's the timing. Bitwig knows about the timing of each clip and knows about the timing of each audio clip too so that for example um this is an audio it's a drum beat it's a drum loop here it is so if i wanted to to add a beat to this loop that we're now playing if i play here it'll play when that clip had finished if you saw that it waited until the end so you can build up tracks like this if i um i don't know i don't know what this footage one does but So you can see how you build up tracks like this. When you play uh, a clip in one of these vertical columns, it stops the other one playing. So you can see there that drum beat is building in complexity. Um, you can stop it by clicking the, the boxes at the bottom. Um, this is how you construct music. When you want to play all of these things at the same time, then you can see that you can press play here, it becomes a scene. And you can move between scenes to build up the playing of the track. And that's what there is, that's what this does differently, that's what Bitwig Studio does differently to Arda and to Cubase and to all the rest of them. It adds this real-time loop-based element to song construction and to performance. Um, and it does all this without ever stopping the audio. All of this audio from the microphone is still going in. And it does this by 
MIDI, MIDI, audio, and a combination of all of them. So, for example, this is this here is going to an external synth. These notes, wherever they are. Um, in fact, that's just a simple chord. So, if we click on that channel, this MIDI data. If I uh, just stop that for a second. So the MIDI data. This is going to an external synthesizer, and this is something that Bitwig does very well. Um, here, hardware, this is the hardware instrument, this is classified as a router, there's two of them that come with Bitwig. It's sending MIDI data out, but expecting some audio to come back, and it understands that in the, the context of the track. So it's sending the MIDI data from here and from the clip, and it's handling the audio data, which then gets sent to the rest of the track. That's very good for complex systems where you've got external equipment. Um, the, this, the, the notes are being generated because you could see that that was just a chord previously using an arpeggiator which is taking the values of those notes and generating a different one on each beat which I'm then forcing into this diatonic transposer which enforces a key on the notes that are being generated and these are, this is a, the, there are note effects just in the same way that there are audio effects and they're processing the MIDI data so that you can build very complicated kind of patches, modular patches out of your um, configuration more so than you could if, if, if it was a simple digital audio workstation where it's kind of aping a recording studio environment. Um, this gets even more complicated when you can modulate values from one of these devices with values from another and combined with the MIDI control you have all over these, it becomes a very powerful environment for creating creating very geeky music, but also pretty straightforward and stable as well if you wanted to create more standard tracks with it. Um, the way that this is timed into real-time audio is brilliant. I mean, if I go over to my synth and actually change it, this is... Much like the uh, the microphone input, but um, I'm actually dealing with external equipment, internal equipment, internal sounds, and it all works very well. Um, the echo effect on this channel is because um, I'm sending it to an um, an effects bus, um, which if, if you see in the range view is down here at the very bottom. Here's the reverb, and that's just a bus where you can send a little bit of audio from each one of the tracks, just as you would with a digital audio workstation, um, and process it. Um, with this whole reverb, I think it sounds all right. Um, and then the other killer feature in Bitwig Studio um, that even Ableton Live doesn't have is that you can have the clip view alongside the arrange view, um, and that's very useful for me <laughs> because whereas the clip view is very useful for live performances and building up block construction of pieces of music. A lot of us actually prefer a hybrid of both the clip view and the older range view for constructing songs. So you might so the range view is here on the right. I've opened up the clips on the left. You might want to construct a song and make sure the clips are stopped um, by building up the arrangement view when you play the clips, and you can see them both alongside them side in each other here, which makes it very intuitive. If I click on and uh, play and record up here. See, it's actually uh, it's recording my mic input because I've record enabled it. But as you play loops, they get recorded into the arrangement view. And you can see the audio data as well, because that's the way that it works. So we're now actually building up a song here as, as if we were in the arrangement view. And you can... the FM synthesizer. There are several instruments. Um, there are some drum generators. Uh, there's the polysynth we used earlier on. There's a sampler and uh, and this FM synth, FM uh, frequency modulation synthesis, very similar to Yamaha's DX7 in the 80s. Um, let's stop all that. Um, so you can see there that I actually can, that becomes then your song, if I get rid of the uh, clip view. That's what you output as an MP3 or as a WAV file. Um, and we did that by using a, a, both the clip view and the arrangement view. Um, you could go in, you can resize these. You can edit audio data in the arrangement view just as you would um, just as you would the, the audio data in the clips. You can see that's just, you can create them um, 
and that's separate to the clip view. This is where you actually create the final product. Um, I mentioned briefly that um, it came with these, uh, the polysynth and um, a draw bar organ, the FM, some drum sounds. It also comes with a very, very good sampler, um, which is at the heart of most of the drum sounds, actually. If we click on the drum machine device, you can see that um, here are the drum sounds arranged in a grid, like on a drum machine, so that you can play them with a keyboard. These are the notes and MIDI notes, which which will trigger these beats. Um, and here's the sampler itself with the the sample of the drum beat already pre-configured. There are, it comes with lots of audio sounds, lots of drum kits, um, and lots of um, libraries and packages that you can download, um, preview sounds from, drag and drop them into your clip view, um, lots of packages, create your own libraries, which is what most people do to play with sounds and ideas. You drag and drop them into the clip view, back out into the browser. Um, and it's, it's a very good way of working. It's a very good audio production environment. Um, and that's what's so exciting about Bitwig coming to, to Linux and what makes Bitwig and Jack and Linux such a great combination. Um, look out uh, for the review in Linux Voice issue three. Um, hopefully this has given you some taste of how the whole thing comes together. Um, and I've barely scratched the surface, but <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye.